What's up ladies and gents, this is Carlos with CTM Productions, AKA the real estate photographer. And if you're watching this video, it's because you're interested on my top tips for HDR handheld real estate photography. Let's get it. All right, quick disclaimer, if you've never shot real estate photography before, I do recommend using a tripod, but if you have a little experience, then handheld photography might be for you. Keep in mind, this is for MLS photography. This is not architectural photography. This is not interior design photography. This is for turn and burn properties so you can get in, get out, shoot another property and make more money for you. So now let's get into the settings and the type of camera that I use. So keep in mind, you don't have to have this same setup for handheld to work, but this setup does help tremendously. So first thing I'm using as far as the camera goes is the Nikon Z6. This has in-body stabilization. The lens has vibration compensation. This is the Tamron 15 to 30. So with the vibration compensation and the image stabilization paired together, it really takes away a lot of that, that shake that you might have whenever you're hand, um, holding the camera. So Tamron 15 to 30, Nikon Z6, and the cage I'm using is a Camvay cage. It's really straightforward, it's nothing too crazy, but it does give me another place to place my hand, and it creates for a more steady rig, a more steady shot. So this all helps tremendously. In my camera, the Nikon Z6, as soon as you hit menu, you're gonna go into auto bracketing. Most cameras nowadays have auto bracketing. You just need to find it on your camera. So for the Nikon Z6, I go to auto bracketing. I leave it, I leave it at AE. The number of shots is negative three. That's where you wanna leave it. Traditionally, you would shoot HDR at three frames or even five. But in the method that I use, it needs to be on negative three and I'll get into that later. The increment or number of shots is going to be three as well. From there, you're gonna to wanna to put your camera on the release mode, or some, some cameras are called continuous. You're gonna to wanna to put it on the highest mode it's possible. So for the Nikon, they have low continuous, they have high continuous, and then they have continuous high extended. That's the fastest you can get. It's like seven or nine seconds um, per frames per second. One of those, seven or nine. It's really fast and that's what you wanna have. Okay, one other thing I forgot to mention is that your camera needs to be on aperture priority mode. It's the big A. It's not auto, it's A. Just the big capital letter A. Set, up, set it to aperture priority and the ISO needs to be at 500 max. Sometimes I shoot ISO 250. Right now you can't really tell but it's actually pretty dark in here. So I'm gonna shoot at ISO 500. Essentially, you have to become the tripod if you're shooting handheld. So the one thing that I do is I, I bend my knees, I try to keep my back straight, and I look through the viewfinder for, at that point. So as I'm looking through the viewfinder, I'm trying to find the best composition possible, but this is not really a tutorial on composition, this is just how I physically shoot it handheld, right? So once you have your composition ready, right now my camera is showing F9, one eighth of a second at ISO 500. The slowest I like to shoot is at a quarter or half a second. I know some people think that's impossible, but it's very possible. Right now my camera's fluctuating between one eighth, yeah, it's about one eighth, okay? The first shot is gonna be a normal exposure. The second shot, is gonna be super dark, and the third shot is gonna be right in between. That was the negative three increments that we're shooting in. So I'm gonna set up, we'll kind of zoom in a little bit. The shot that I'm taking right now is showcasing the entryway and a dining area. I'm gonna turn down my exposure compensation slightly. I'm just looking for an evenly lit image. Right now this is evenly lit. I'm gonna hold down the button. I kind of, usually what I'll do is I kind of hold my breath for a second, and then I'll take the photo. Hand is on the grip. Okay, look, compose, evenly lit, looks good. And just like that, I took three shots. A normal exposure, okay? Then you have a super dark for the exterior, and that's right in between. It's almost the same, actually, to be honest. But I guarantee you it's gonna work. On to the next shot. 
Okay, so the one thing to keep in mind is that the first shot that you take, it needs to be a evenly lit shot. It's okay if the windows are slightly blown out, you want the walls and the interior to be semi-lit, but it doesn't need to be so lit that everything's blown out. With traditional HDR, there's an over overexposed image and then there's a neutral one and then there's a dark one. For what I'm doing, you just need one that's slightly, slightly overexposed, but not by much. So now I'm gonna shoot the kitchen, right? And like I said, it's hard to tell, but it's really dark in here. Half of the recess lights don't work. The center light doesn't work. The lights above this arc don't work. Nothing is working, so it's really dark. But it doesn't matter, because this still works. We'll flex on y'all real quick. Okay, so another tip for shooting handheld is to use walls to help you stabilize yourself in the camera. So most of the time, if I'm not squatting, then I'm using the wall to hold me up. You can even put your camera against the wall to help, but you don't wanna scratch the wall, right? Like I almost did. But use the wall to, walls to your advantage. You can do the same thing with countertops, cabinets, whatever is there, use it to help support you, okay? So once you're nice and supported, I'm gonna compose the shot. I'm gonna get an evenly lit exposure so this looks pretty good. I'm at negative 0.7 exposure compensation. I'm shooting at one fifth of a second and it's F9. One fifth of a second. I'm telling you, it's gonna work out fine. So I compose, look, took the shot. So another thing that I do just to make sure, cause that's a slow shutter speed, one fifth of a second. I don't doubt that I got the shot and it's sharp, but if I ever do, I basically just zoom into the image and look at it and right now it looks sharp it's gonna be really hard to tell right here but i'll have the files for you guys and it's definitely sharp and you have to keep in mind this is for mls photography this is not for architectural this is not interior design this is for mls when other people will be looking at these images on the screen that's about this same size so don't get too bogged down on quality quality is important but this is not going in a magazine or anything like that Let's get on with the rest. All right, so once again, we're in another room that has no lights whatsoever. There's, there's no light bulbs and the light bulbs that are in there, they don't work. So luckily right now, there is a lot of natural light coming in, but whenever it is, whenever the natural light's coming in and there's no light bulbs, you get a lot of dark areas in the corners, especially on the side that has the window. So I'm gonna expose for the outside Probably a little bit brighter, just cause I know I can get away with it. Right now the settings are F9, 1 20th of a second, ISO 500. Put my hand on the grip, compose, shoot. And just like that, I have an exposure for the outside, for the inside, and one in between. And we'll be golden whenever we, we process the image. All right, y'all, so that pretty much sums up the shoot. And just for a recap, Tamron 15 to 30 millimeter lens, Nikon Z6, Canvate cage. We shot negative three brackets, an evenly lit exposure, a super dark one, one right in between. I shot around F9. It's gonna fluctuate depending on the, the lighting. ISO 500 and the shutter speed, of course, is always changing because you have it on aperture priority. Now that we've shot the images, we're gonna go back to the office and we're gonna process them all in Lightroom. Let's get it. All right, y'all, so we're back in the office and we're about to dive into Lightroom where I'll show you how I achieved the final results. Remember that this property was not the greatest of properties. There were broken light fixtures, blown out bulbs, and no furniture or any type of staging. Sometimes you have properties like this and sometimes you have million dollar homes that look amazing once completed, just the way it is. Also, keep in mind that this is the method that I currently use, handheld HDR. I used to use flash, but the shoots took too long, as did post-production. The median home value in my town is only $146,000. Essentially, that means we don't have a large luxury market and realtors aren't paying top dollar for photo shoots. So in order for me to be financially free, I had to devise a new method. In the past year, I've doubled my clients doubled my real estate photography sales with just real estate alone. I maintain my desired lifestyle. I no longer work on the weekends and I still have time for my beautiful wife and three kids. I firmly believe I could not have achieved this without shooting handheld. 
Remember, my market is not your market and my town is not your town. So yes, there are other ways of being successful in real estate photography, absolutely. But this is mine, vamos a Lightroom. All right, y'all, so we're here in Lightroom and I'm going to show you how I achieved the final image. So when, you, when we first took the images, we had our neutral exposure. We have our super dark, or so I call it. That one is exposing for the exterior, as you can see right there. And then the last image it shoots is the one that's right in between, that's your middle image. Uh, you would think they would put it like this, you know, your neutral, medium, dark, but for whatever reason, the camera shoots it as this exposure, the darker the darkest exposure and the one in the middle so this is the final image i've actually delivered the images and even now as i'm going back and i'm looking at them i can see errors i, I can see things i would have done differently but you have to remember that this is real estate photography for mls these photos aren't going in a magazine so you don't have to have the most edited polished image it does depend on your editing style if you want your image to be better well then you can edit it longer and absolutely you can do that you know if you want to charge more for better images perfect you can do that if you just kind of want to get by with what you have because the market value of the house is low um, realtors aren't paying you that much well then this technique could be good for you or you could fit somewhere right in between it's really up to you the first thing i would say is once you get your image i always use the my presets so i have different presets over here for this tutorial um, i created one called beige slash white walls i've actually been using that a lot lately and it works out really well so this is the preset that you guys are going to get the beige white walls and within the preset the first thing you want to do is turn on your histogram that's that's one of the tips that i would say turning on your histogram will show you when where your darks are too dark and where your whites are too white so well, to be technical this is the shadow clipping and this one is called the highlight clipping right so if your image was too bright your computer would start to tell you like so you notice that's obviously way too bright that's not what you want so i like to keep it to where the clipping is just minimal right you can see it a little bit but it's not too crazy and same for the dark i'll use that if this one turns blue i believe well, let's turn it back on so as you can see right here this is telling you this is way too dark right and of course you never have your blacks all the way down so i like to keep it just right where it disappears keep it you know somewhere in the middle but keep in mind that this sometimes is completely inaccurate. It'll tell you that it's too dark or it's too bright, but the image will look. So let your eye be the best judge. Don't just automatically assume that the histogram is gonna tell you exactly that your image is perfect because it, it just doesn't work that way. I'm just gonna kind of go through it, like I said, and show you what, I, what I've done. The original image is that. After I applied the preset, this is what happens. So the highlights, I always turn down. Shadows, I, I raise them. I do use my shadows a lot, uh, but depending on the time of day, depending on the house you're shooting, depending on the color of the walls, will depend on how much shadows you use. Now, I will say a lot of beginners will crank their shadows up, and that's one thing you don't want to do, because that's what gives you that HDR look. So a lot of people that say that HDR look, looks HDR, it's probably because the guy who's editing just is maybe a newbie and they're turning up their shadows all the way up and they're turning their whites down and it just makes the image look muddy and unrealistic so i honestly don't even crank up the shadows that much you know i think i had it at five a second ago but i let my eye be the judge and let my eye tell me what looks realistic and what does whites and blacks we already went over that the further you turn your whites down, it's basically eliminating the whites. And that'll actually get rid of all the clipping, but that doesn't look right. You know, it just looks really, um, it looks muddy and it looks real bland and dull. And that's not what the house actually looks like. The higher you crank it up, the more vibrant these whites will get. But like I said, just do it sparingly. Don't crank it up all the way. The key is to make subtle adjustments. A bunch of subtle adjustments is better than making one extreme adjustment. So subtle adjustments on the whites, subtle on the blacks, that looks good. Texture, I leave around 21, clarity around 26, dehaze. Here's another thing a lot of people do is they'll dehaze and they'll crank it all the way up. And that also gives you that HDR look. 
And when you add the dehazer, it does this weird thing just around the edges of walls and it looks totally fake. And it's just not, the house doesn't have those ugly marks. So normally it would look like this, this is zero. So the dehazer, I usually put it, I add it to where I don't see that ugly, those ugly black marks that come around the windows. So I don't know, something about right there looks good to me. Vibrance, I add a little bit. Saturation, I add a little bit. This right here, these tone curves, these, I keep this exactly the same on all my presets. I can't tell you technically why it works or how it works. I just know that my eye gravitates to these settings and it looks really good. So you could mess around with those if you want. That's just where I keep it. Another tip I have is for saturation. So originally, the saturation all the, on all these will be set to zero. So if you set this to zero, it's just, to me it's too much yellow, an orange and yellow. Those are the two main ones that I adjust immediately. This wall, I mean this wall, this house was had beige walls and the light fixtures were those ugly orange bulbs. And I wish people wouldn't use them, but you know, sadly they do. So you can't completely eliminate the orange because if you do, it takes away all the color. A lot of the color is coming from the light fixtures in the house and of course from um, outside. So I turned down the orange. I believe I was at negative 56, somewhere around there. Um, yellow, I turned down. Greens, I turned down. Aquas, blues, I also turned down. Purples, magenta, as you can see. So the blue, depending on what time of day, it's gonna vary. You know, if I were to have kept it at zero, to me, that looks fake. All this blue, the sky was blue that day, but it just looks, it doesn't look accurate. So I normally turn the blue down. Another tip is the luminance. Most people don't ever mess with this, but I do because I, I feel like it works really well. So orange and yellow are the two main ones I mess with, that and blue. Um, when you crank up the orange and you crank up the yellow, it kind of just brightens everything that's orange and yellow, which is the interior of the house. So I crank those up a lot. You want to be careful because if you crank up the orange and the yellow too much, depending on what your settings are at, it it makes it look super muddy around the walls. Uh, luckily for this house, it's actually not doing that. It actually looks all right, but I'm, I would never keep it at 100. I usually just crank it up a little bit until I feel like it looks good. Uh, the blues, it's the same thing. The blues will obviously control the sky, the exterior, and it's just to your liking. You know, Some people like their blues super dark. Some like them right in between. I just want it to look realistic. Uh, Cause like I said, this is just real estate photography. This is just turn and burn, shoot the house, shoot another, make some more money. Sharpening I keep at 100, noise reduction I keep at five. These are the settings. Your lens correction, you wanna make sure that the make and model and profile are all set correctly. Tamron model is the, the 15 to 30. And actually, I think that's the only one you can choose for this one. The profile, I usually don't mess with, to be honest. It's just the make and the model. Distortion and vign uh, vignetting. Um, I just leave that at, at 100. I leave this at 100. Every once in a while, I'll have to adjust the distortion. Um, I'll have to bring it down a notch or crank it up because the horizontal and vertical axis won't be straight. And this will help you with that. I always hit auto when I go to the transform, the perspective. And usually auto, when you click it, it does a really good job of correcting it. So as you can see, it just slightly turned the image to the right. But the horizontal and the vertical, I'm almost always adjusting. This one just so happened to be pretty close, so I didn't mess with it. But on the horizontal, even if you look right here at the grout line, see how this line is not touching the grout line? And over here it is. That tells me something's not straight. Same for... Let me see, no, this looks pretty straight up here. The crown molding is usually a good way to, to indicate whether your horizontal axis is straight. I use that and the grout lines. You just have to be careful because when you start moving things around, everything changes. But the idea is to get it looking as straight as possible. Same with the vertical axis. I'm not gonna really touch it because it, it, sometimes you shoot it and you're perfectly straight, right? Post crop vignetting, I do not touch and I do not touch any of these calibrations. So the other thing that I do that makes the biggest difference is I use radial filters. So as you can see, 
I have radial filters all over the place. And actually this is not that many. Sometimes I'll have like 50 radial filters all over the image, but for the sake of keeping it simple, um, I just did a few of them for you guys. So when I'm adding these radial filters, you can see once you click on it, you can see what I've, I've done to the radial filter. So this one, I brought down the highlights, I brought down the shadows, brought down the whites, and I changed the color temperature. So if you move this, you'll see, let's do it slowly. Hopefully you can see the difference. Kind of just took away a little bit of that reflection. These reflections were really bad. They call it color casting. And I almost always have to use these radial filters on the floors, whether it's tile, wood floor. Usually you're going to have to do that Unless you're using some kind of uh, filter on your lens, you're going to have to use radial filters. If not, you're going to see a lot of ugly colors on the floor. Let's see if we can move. See, if we move all these completely, you'll notice how this area right here, it's a lot of blue reflection coming in from the sky. And... You know, I don't know why people make too much, so much of a big deal of it because when you're in the house, you know, the next time you're in the house shooting, that reflection is actually there. I know your eye can distinguish the difference in color temperature, so a lot of times you won't even notice it, but those reflections are real reflections. They're not just made up. Your camera didn't just make up the reflection. It's actually there. So in my opinion, it's best just to kind of tone it down a notch. You don't have to completely eliminate it. Those are those are real reflections. That's what the house really looks like. And that's why I shoot HDR and I don't use flash because when you're taking photos with flash, um, and like I said, I know I'm gonna get hounded for this, but when you're using a flash, let's say you have you know a flash in this dining room and then one over here in this office, and then you have a flash off to the right, the house will never look like that in real life. So in my opinion, you're you're misrepresenting the house and people always say, oh, well, you have to show the house in its best light. Well, the best light you can possibly show it is the light that's in the house. The only light that's actually there are the light fixtures and the exterior, the natural light. There's no other light in the house. You know, people aren't gonna be coming into the home with LED lights and flashes and to make it look better to help themselves buy the house. So in my opinion, I don't use flash. And, and I'm speaking strictly for real estate photography. It'd be different if we're talking about interior design or architectural, that's somewhat different. But for real estate, whenever you're taking photos of a house, you're trying to represent the house to what it is and to what it actually looks like and not misrepresent it by using all these flashes, all these different types of flash and different pieces of gear. And like I said, that's just my opinion. I know a lot of y'all probably won't agree, but anyways, let's get moving. So this next shot was in the kitchen. This is when I was leaning against the wall. That was your neutral exposure. This was the, uh, the over, or I'm sorry, underexposed. And this was the right in the middle. After I applied the, um, the preset, this is what I came up with. This image, to be completely honest, as you can see, I only use one, two, two radio filters, and that was it. And the image is done, and you can go on to the next. Like I said, if you want to edit the image further, you can. If you want it to look better, you can keep on editing. You can add more radio filters. You can mess around with the image for as long as you want. But for me, the goal is to keep the editing under two minutes, especially if I'm editing 30 to 40 images. You know, I don't want to edit for more than an hour, especially when I have five houses to edit. So the idea is to be quick and effective and make sure your image represents the room, how it actually looks. Here's another image that we took in the master. Remember in the master, there was none of the lights work. The recess lights didn't work. Uh, the ceiling fan didn't work. And this is what I got. So keep in mind, I have done zero window pulls. I have not done not one window pull. This is the actual image. I'll hit reset just so you know. There it is, there's a resetted image. So for all those naysayers out there, I was shooting F9 at 1 50th of a second. And actually let's go back over here because some of y'all think that I can't shoot at 1 50th of a second. This is 1 50th of a second. Let's zoom in a little bit and I'll just show you that it's definitely possible. Let's let the computer load for a second. Um, and as you can see, it's definitely sharp. You know, 
obviously if you were using a tripod you might get it a little sharper you know i'm not going to disagree with that but for shooting handheld i would say this works perfectly fine let's go back to let's go back to this image so like i said your editing style has a lot to do with it i try to keep it looking as realistic as possible some people like their photos more vibrant some people like their photos uh slightly warmer cooler me i try to nail it exactly as it was in the room so your eye is usually the best way to do that Right here, I just did some dodging here. I did some more dodging on this area. I actually created my own preset. That's what's really cool about Lightroom. You can create your own custom preset for certain items. So I created one called Window. And as you can see, if I take this off, it's slightly overexposed outside. Well, it's definitely overexposed, right? But with this window radio filter, when it goes back on, it kind of just tones it down a little bit and you can see the whole area that it's affecting and like i said you know i can go in here if i wanted to let's you know let me just show you guys you go to exposure i made one called brighten and darken although they already have one called dodge lighten and burn darken but you know if you want to you can go in here and you can lighten this up and you know you can lighten this over here you can lighten this over here then oh you know what the carpet's not bright enough let's do that let's do that you can take it as far as you want this is just i'm just showing you how i do it um and it's really up to you and your market and how much you're getting paid for these shoots you know some of you guys are getting paid over 200 dollars for a smaller home you know i i can't remember what this house um i charged the realtor but i want to say it was around 150 dollars so i'm not going to spend you know two three hours editing these images whenever i'm getting paid that much you know depending where you're from the location you're at um, all these factors are going to determine how much editing you want to put into the image but as for me this is how i do it so these are the final images i know i didn't go over them super thoroughly but i just wanted to show you that it is indeed possible to shoot handheld and get a solid image for the mls that image, that image, and there you go. Simple as that. Hey, I appreciate y'all checking out the video. I really do believe that shooting real estate photography is one of the best ways to have financial freedom. I've shot everything from weddings to food photography, and real estate has been the most lucrative for me. And because of the level of success that I've achieved, I've decided to create a full online course on how to be a real estate photographer where I'll discuss how to gain new clients, break down equipment, how to choose your angles and composition, and my entire workflow and delivery. And the course will not include flash. I know there are currently photographers who have courses that include flash, cam rangers, light meters, and equipment that in my opinion takes years to learn. My course, however, will be more comprehensive, straightforward, and will apply to the photographer who wants to learn quickly and concisely. And if in the future you want to switch to flash, then you have the option to do so. So if you're interested in learning the trade, like, subscribe, and stay tuned for the much anticipated course, The Real Estate Photographer. Peace. Thank you.